Today's video is on the factor label method for calculating gas consumption. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips, techniques, and trips video. I don't think I'll be going out on a limb if I make the statement that most recreational divers do not know their gas consumption rate and even fewer know how to calculate their gas consumption rate. Most of those that do probably are using a gas integrated computer which tells them what their gas consumption rate is. For most recreational divers that doesn't present a huge problem. However, New technical divers do need to know how to calculate their gas consumption for dive planning purposes. Some of the approaches presented in technical diving manuals can be difficult to understand for new technical divers. So this video is going to illustrate a relatively simple method uh, that is easier to understand for calculating gas consumption. Since this video is intended for new technical divers, I'm going to assume that the average viewer knows little or nothing about gas consumption rates. So before we begin, I'm going to review some basic uh, gas consumption concepts. First, there are generally two different types of consumption rates. The first gas consumption rate is known as the working rate, and this is used generally for descents, uh, time on the bottom, and then also for ascents. The second rate is the deco or decompression rate, and this is what is used uh, to determine gas consumption rates during decompression stops and on ascents between decompression stops. There are at least two different ways of expressing gas consumption rates, and the first one is known as the SAC rate, and this stands for surface air consumption. So this is the diver's consumption rate corrected to the surface from whatever depth uh, that they are at. Uh, the SAC rate can be expressed in either pressure or volume per minute. The second manner that gas consumption rates can be expressed is in RMV. This stands for respiratory minute volume. And in this case, the rate is not necessarily converted to the surface and it is expressed in volume per minute. For the purposes of this video, we will be discussing uh, SAC, the surface air consumption rate. The tools needed to calculate your surface air consumption rate include a dive computer, a pressure gauge, wet notes, and a calculator. The wet notes will be used to record some data, uh, including time, depth, and pressure. So it is very convenient to create a page uh, in your wet notes with three different columns for each one of these pieces of data. Underwater, you will need to begin by designating at a particular point in the dive, usually at the bottom. Uh, you will need to record the time, depth, and pressure. You will then need to conduct the dive activity at the same depth. And so this could be at the bottom to calculate your working sack rate, or it could be at a deco stop to calculate your decompression sack rate. At the end of the designated period, you will then need to record the ending time, depth, and pressure. It is important to have a sufficient length of time in order to calculate accurate results. While a longer period is better than a shorter period, a period of approximately 10 minutes is sufficient to obtain accurate results. If you are using an analog gauge for the pressure, it is essential that you accurately observe the gas pressures at both the beginning and the ending of the period. When some new divers are calculating their working sack rate, there is a tendency for the diver not to particularly exert themselves. 
this results in a final working sack rate calculation that is lower than what would normally be needed for gas calculations. So it is important that the diver actually exert themselves in order to be able to calculate an accurate working sack rate. Back on dry land, it is necessary to calculate the total time interval in minutes, the change in pressure in the interval, and the atmosphere's absolute at depth. We are now going to use the factor label method. The factor label method is easy to understand when the equation for the surface air consumption is calculated. The unit labels will be canceled out. What this leaves is the volume per time unit. With the factor label method, we have the volume of the gas consumed used over a period of time and then this is corrected to the surface. This will yield the surface air consumption rate. The first term in the SAC equation is the volume of gas consumed. To calculate this, we need to start with the pressure used over the interval and multiply it by the rated volume of the tanks divided by the rated pressure in the tanks. The second term in the SAC equation relates to time. What we are really interested in is calculating the time rate. This is represented by one divided by the number of minutes in the interval. The third term in the SAC equation relates to the need for a correction to the surface. What occurs is that you use less gas on the surface and then at depth, and since we are calculating things for the surface, we need to correct this calculation. So the way that we do this is we include the third term as one divided by the atmosphere's absolute ATA. This is calculated by 33 over the depth plus 33 in the case of imperial units. Putting this all together, the SAC rate has a total of four terms. The first term is PSI used over the interval. The second term is the rated volume in cubic feet in the tanks divided by the rated PSI in the tanks times one over the minutes in the interval times 33 feet divided by the depth plus 33 feet. With the factor label method, the PSI in the numerator in the first term is canceled out by the PSI in the denominator in the second term. Similarly, the feet in the fourth term in the numerator is canceled out by the feet in the denominator in the same fourth term. What this leaves you with is a sack rate, which has cubic feet in the numerator and minutes in the denominator. So this is the number of cubic feet in gas that the diver consumes per minute, corrected to the surface. Let's go through an example now to show just how easy the factor label method is in practice. We have a dive where 1300 PSI is consumed over a 15 minute interval on a dive at 145 feet. And the tanks that were used for this dive uh, was an AL80 twin set with a total of 160 cubic feet. So our first term is the gas consumed during the interval, and this is 1300 PSI. Our second term involves the rated volume and pressure for our tanks. In this case, we have a total of 160 cubic feet divided by 3000 PSI. The third term involves the length of the interval. In this case, it was 15 minutes, so we are going to divide our equation by 15 minutes. 
Our last term involves the fact that we consume gas at a greater rate at depth than on the surface, so we need to correct our equation to the surface. This last term is 33 feet divided by 145 feet plus 33 feet, which gives us our atmosphere's absolute. Once again, the PSI in the first term is canceled out by the PSI in the second term, and the feet in the top and the bottom of the fourth term cancel each other out as well. So we are left with cubic feet per minute, and in our case, our calculation results in 0 0.84 cubic feet per minute as our sack rate. Once our sack rate is calculated, we can use it to determine dive gas requirements on any particular dive. Please note that technical diving generally requires a 50% gas reserve. We are going to use the same basic equations that we have been working with in order to calculate how much gas we are going to need on a particular dive. For dive planning, we are going to rearrange our equation. The first term in the equation is going to be our surface air consumption rate measured in cubic feet per minute. Our second term is going to be our dive time in minutes. And our third term is our correction for the fact that gas is consumed faster at depth than on the surface. So this is the depth plus 33 feet divided by 33 feet again in imperial units. Here is an example to illustrate how the dive planning would be performed for the amount of gas needed. This is particularly the gas needed for the bottom part of the dive and does not include gas needed for the ascent. So we want to know how much gas is needed for the bottom portion of the dive uh, for 20 minutes at a depth of 165 feet. Using a surface air consumption rate of 0 0.8 cubic feet per minute, we are going to determine our cubic feet in gas required by multiplying our sack rate by 20 minutes for the bottom portion of the dive times the correction factor for the increased consumption of gas at depth. That last term is 165 feet plus 33 feet divided by 33 feet. And our answer is a total of 96 cubic feet is required to perform this dive. Practicing a 50% gas reserve, you would actually need to start this dive with a total of 144 cubic feet. This calculation does not include the amount of gas that would be needed in order to reach your first deco stop, so you would also need to take that into account. You could calculate the additional gas needed given a particular ascent rate. Those additional calculations are generally taken into account when using decompression software. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. I hope this video has been of some benefit and that it was not too boring. Thanks for watching.